Hello dear students, inshallah today we will talk about the first lesson in unit 3 which is the living organisms diversity and classification diversity and the classification of the living organisms Firstly, we'll talk about the diversity of animals. What is the meaning of diversity? Due to the large variety or the great variety of animals, so they are divided according to or they are put in groups which are similar together according to number one, the size. Okay, sure, according to the size, so we have large animals as elephants and small animals as rat and rabbit and so on. So, the diversity of the animals, firstly, according to the size. The second point of the diversity of the animals is according to their environment, where they live. You know that there are some animals that live on land, as horses, cats, dogs, and so on. Others live in water as fish. So, again, the diversity of animals according to number one, the size, number two, the environment where the animals live. Then we will talk about the diversity of plants. Diversity of plants is according to what? Number one, according to the plant size. As we talk about the size, sure, there will be large plants as palm tree and small plants as clever okay the second part or the second point in the diversity of plants is according to also the size but take care the size of leaves not the size of the plant the size of the plant leaves sure you will have large leaves or plants have large leaves and other plants have small leaves plants have large leaves as the leaves of the banana tree banana trees have large leaves but small plants as gargir yes it's called gargir it has small leaves Then we will talk about the diversity of microorganisms. Firstly, what is the meaning of microorganisms? Microorganisms, as we say, micro. Micro means tiny or very small. They are the living organisms that can't be seen by our naked eyes. They can be seen only by the microscope. These microorganisms are different in the shape and the way of the movement very important point if I ask you complete microorganisms differ from each other in space and space yes in shape and the way of movement we have some we have some examples for the microorganisms number one amoeba yes it's called amoeba number two paramecium and the third one we have is euglena so all of these microorganisms amoeba paramecium euglena are different in the shape and the way of the movement meaning each one of them is moved by different way from the other now dear students we go to the classification of animals classification means also grouping for animals but here classification is more specific than diversity Firstly, we will start with the classification of animals according to the nature of the body supporting. What is the meaning of body supporting? All of us as people, we move straight because we have backbones in our backs, right? This backbone is called support, support for our bodies. So here the living or sorry, the animals will classify according to their supporting body. They are classified into Number one, soft body living organisms or soft body animals, meaning they have no support, with no support in their bodies as jellyfish and octopus. Jellyfish and octopus, both of them are from the soft body animals because they don't have any support in their bodies. But other plants have supported body 
this support in their bodies may be external support or internal support external support as a snail and shrimps if you touch this snail you will find it very hard right it's a solid from outside this solid part is the support of this snail but from inside it's soft okay so snail is from the supported body animals and its support is from the external supports also shrimp if you touch the shrimp also you will find it from outside is solid or hard but it's soft from its inside so snails and shrimps are from the external supported body animals but there are other plants sorry other animals that their support are internal as us as human as i said before here we have backbones in our backs this backbone is inside our body so it's an internal support also we have birds as you see here this is the backbone of the birds it's inside their bodies also mammals as dogs cats and so on all of these are the supported body inside their bodies so the animals according to the supported body we have two types number one a soft body animals as jellyfish number two supported body animals and these animals or this support may be external or internal here dear students we will talk about the second part of classification of animals according to the number of legs here the classification of not any animals we talk about the classification of arthropods arthropods what is the meaning of arthropods arthropods are invertebrates invertebrates that have jointed legs what is the meaning of invertebrates any living organism that don't have backbones they are called invertebrates but they have jointed legs means legs with joints it's classified into three groups the first group is called insects all of us know the insects okay insects have three pairs of legs three pairs of legs as B as you see here we have a picture for B if you see one two three three legs in each side so it's called three pairs of legs okay again now we are talking about the classification of arthropods according to the number of legs these arthropods are classified into three groups the first one is called the insects insects have three pairs of legs as bee and the fly the second group is called arachnids 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 have four pairs of legs as the spider if you count here one two three four here it has four legs in each side so it's called it has four pairs of legs the third group and the last one is called myriapods myriapods myria means many myriapods these are the arthropods that have many or large number of legs as this uh, one which is called scolopendra it's called scolopendra repeat after me scolopendra so we have insects from the insects we have bee which has only three pairs of legs spider and scorpion from the arachnids they have four pairs of legs myriapods and i said myria means many so as scolopendra which has many or large number of large number of uh, jointed legs okay Then we will talk about the classification of mammals according to the kind and the number of teeth. What is the meaning of mammals? Mammals are the living organisms or the animals that give birth. Give birth, not lay eggs. Okay, this is the meaning of mammals. These mammals now are classified according to the kind and the number of teeth. How? These mammals are classified into two groups teethless mammals meaning have no teeth which is called edentates 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 they are the mammals that have no teeth 
and the other group or mammals that having teeth okay mammals that have no teeth or called edentates as sloth this is called sloth and armadillo these two mammals these are these two uh, living organisms or mammals with no teeth have no teeth they are called sloth and armadillo but the second group of mammals that having teeth they are also classified into number one animals having front teeth extended outside as you see here in the hedgehog hedgehog has the front teeth extend outside and we can say here give reason <coughs> sorry hedgehog has the front teeth extend outside we will say to capture the insects or for insect capture okay so again now we are talking about the classification of mammals according to the kind and the number of teeth they are classified into two main groups the first group mammals with no teeth which are called edentates examples we have here are sloth and armadillo the second group mammals having teeth which are classified into number one mammals having the front teeth extend outside as hedgehog give reason why to capture the insects the second group also in the mammals having teeth they are the animals having pointed canines and molars with sharp projection pointed canines as you see here as the lion can you see here in this picture two pointed canines and the tiger also both of them have pointed canines and sharp molars with sharp projections to cut and deter the pray okay also we still talking about the mammals having teeth here we have the third group which are animals have sharp incisors what is the meaning of incisors incisors the front teeth in our mouth the front teeth according to these sharp incisors mammals are classified into two groups the first group is called rodents 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 as rat which has only one pair of incisors in each jaw one pair of incisors in each jaw as you see here in this picture so rat is from rodents rat is from rodents why because it has only one pair of teeth in each jaw each jaw all of us have two jaws in our mouth upper jaw and lower jaw rodents at the rat has only one pair of incisors in each jaw one pair up and one pair down the second group is called lagomorphs lagomorphs they have two pairs in the upper jaw and only one pair in the lower jaw as the rabbit as the rabbit okay then we will talk about the classification of plants after we have finished the classification of animals plants are classified according to the way of reproduction what is the meaning of reproduction reproduction means to produce new individuals so here the plants are classified according to the way of reproduction classified into two main groups the first group they are the plants which are reproduced by forming spores by forming spores and they are called ferns so ferns are small plants reproduced by forming spores here we have two examples for these plants adiantum and vogare adiantum and vogare so adiantum and vogare are two plants from ferns because they reproduce by forming spores and as you see here in this picture these are small uh, brown spots they are the spores again plants are classified according to the way of reproduction the first group the plants that reproduce by forming spores these plants are called ferns as adiantum and vogare so if i ask you give reason adiantum and vogare are from 
ferns you will say because they reproduce by forming spores okay but the second group they are the plants which are reproduced by forming seeds plants reproduce by forming seeds also they are classified into two groups the first group is called gymnosperms gymnosperms are the plants which reproduce by forming seeds but here the seeds are formed inside cones not inside a cover as pine as you see here this is a cone this tree is called pine tree here it forms cones in which the seeds are formed the second type is called cycas this is the shape of the cyclant then the second group which is called the angiosperms angiosperms also angiosperms are plants that reproduce by forming seeds also they are called flowering plants but here the seeds are formed inside pericarp or inside a cover here these angiosperms are divided into two groups number one monocotyledon plants as maize which is the corn can you see here these seeds are formed inside cover can you see the outer cover this green cover and the seeds are formed inside it okay it's called do you remember when we said in the first unit mono means excellent one and doi means two excellent students so here corn or maize is called monocotyledon because its seed is formed of only one part as you see it's a whole one but the dicotyledon as b as you see here the seed of the b is divided from the middle to give you a, an impression it's formed of two parts okay also as you see here the b plant is formed inside the cover so it's from angiosperms okay so the uh, plants which are reproduced by forming seeds are classified into two groups gymnosperms and angiosperms here we have two important definitions dear students number one what is the meaning of species what is the meaning of species species is the group of similar living organisms or the basic unit of the classification for the living organisms each group of animals have the same the same characters or similar to each other it's called one species okay also we have another important definition which is called taxonomy taxonomy it's the branch of the biology all of us know that in this unit we are talking about living organisms so this unit mainly is biology biology is a branch of uh, science so taxonomy is a branch of biology which is specific for classification of the living organisms here we will talk about new point if we have two individuals of the same species meaning dog and another dog when they mate together mate here means marry each other they produce new individual this new individual is or will be fertile what is the meaning of fertile is able to reproduce able to produce new individuals for example if i have two dogs marry each other they produce a new puppy or new baby dog okay which will be marry and reproduce again and so on produce new babies and so on but if we have two individuals from different species made together have you ever seen uh, before cat marries a dog of course not because both of them are from two different species but we have some exceptions firstly if this case is happened if we have two individuals of different species made together they produce a sterile individual a sterile is the opposite of fertile okay so sterile means can't reproduce can't produce new individual let's see examples for this case mating of zebra and donkey they will produce new 
individual which is called zonkey zebra and donkey produce zonkey can you see this picture the body shape is similar to the donkey but it's stripped as uh, um, zebra okay but this zonkey is a sterile animal what is the meaning of a sterile animal means it can't produce new individuals it can't mate when it mates it can't produce new zonkeys okay also we have another example mating of donkey and horse the new individual uh, produced is uh, or called mule here can you see the difference between them this is the donkey which is on the right and this is the mule mule is bigger uh, than donkey because it's produced from donkey and horse okay and uh, thank you dear students and goodbye